Are you ever tempted to give up on praying for Muslims or sharing Christ with them? It's easy to assume that Muslims are so set in their beliefs that they'll never change. But a young man named Javed reminds you everyone needs to hear the gospel. I know what Islam is. I know what it means to be born in a Muslim family. And I know how Jesus can change a person's life or a family, even society. So we preach the gospel. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton, and uh, we are going to talk this week about the nation of Afghanistan. Uh, You have probably heard stories about Afghanistan. You may have heard stories of persecution. You may have heard stories of terrorism. Uh, We're going to talk about what God is doing in the nation of Afghanistan. And I have two guests this week, Loan and Javed. They work with Operation Mobilization, reaching Afghans with the gospel message and then discipling them. Once they become a believer, helping them to grow strong in the faith. Loan, Javed, welcome to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Todd, for having uh, us. For welcoming us. Loan, I, I'm sure you get this question all the time. What is Afghanistan like? And I imagine you could write a book about it. Uh, but give our listeners a little picture of what life is like in Afghanistan in 2019. We, we probably know about the war, we know about maybe what it was like 10 years ago. What's it like today? I always answer with my two hands. Afghanistan is like two stories. On the one side, you have the story of destruction, conflict, uh, corruption, the radicalism, a strong return to religion, uh, the Taliban. That story is there, and that's what we hear a lot. And it's real. Suicide bombers constantly, and it breaks our hearts. A wedding, huge wedding, and boom, there's a suicide bomb and 60 people are killed. Or a school or a wrestling club. And then, of course, the military and all that. The other side is a story of kids going to school. It's a story of universities, colleges crowded with young, budding students, of intellectuals. It's a story of young people that are disillusioned with what they have experienced with Islam, people that are sad about everything going around there and looking for answers. They want something else than what they see. And, and so there's the prosperity and the search for something more than this return to radical Islam. So there's a segment, how, how large is it, that's one question, of people who are frustrated with the conflict and the violence and would like to go a different direction. How, how many, how big a percentage of the people is that? Asia Foundation does a survey every year called the Survey of the Afghan People. So in that survey, the, the 2018 survey that came out said that 37.8% of Afghans would leave the country if they had the capacity to do so. Wow. So that's really a sad story. Right. So what percentage of people are disillusioned or what percentage of people reject the violence? I think even the ones that are staying there reject the violence. What percentage are really committed to the Taliban idea? It's hard because many people out of fear also now follow the Taliban idea. They are forced to, where the Taliban have taken over an area, and uh, Javed has just has a story he can share about that. You know, you just have to follow the rules of the Taliban according to... You Whether know, the, you believe it or not, the beard or no the clothes. choice. Yeah. Javed, as you are sharing and broadcasting into Afghanistan, what is the message that, that you're trying to to get to the Afghan people, especially those who may be disillusioned with the Taliban. We preach the gospel. We preach the hope. This is what we are doing. We want uh, the Afghans to know that there is hope. There is hope in Jesus. So that's why we produce all these radio programs, and it's all in the Afghan language, in Dari language, and their own language, culturally appropriate, it's their own culture, and people who work with us and all of us who are producing these radio programs, we are Afghans. 
We are MBBs, um, Muslim background believers. I know what Islam is. I know what it means to be born in a Muslim family. And I know how Jesus can change a person's life or a family, even society. So we preach the gospel. And what is the response? Because I know Afghans are able to call in and talk to you. What what kind of phone calls do you get coming out of Afghanistan? Uh, we have a lot of different uh, calls. Uh, there are uh, great calls. People call and they thank us for all our uh, radio programs, great teachings, what we teach from the Bible. They love it and a lot of them, they ask for Bibles, and uh, we were able to get Bibles to the hands of the people. Also, they can go to our websites, download the Gospels, and download the Bible, and listen to them, because we have a lot of uneducated people in Afghanistan. Uh, because of that, they can listen to audio Bibles, audio Bible recordings, and also we have the Bible in a written format that they can uh, read it. So they can go to our uh, pages so, and read so that's that. the good calls hey i love your broadcast i'm so thankful for you yes <laughs> what what about the bad calls because i'm guessing you get some calls of people who say listen you're an apostate and you should be killed uh, yeah we we have been called kafirs and infidels and all those things and we know it, it comes out of not having the right information. As I talked about false news, there is a lot of news, false news about Christianity, about Jesus, that people, they think they believe in the truth, what they were taught, but that's false news. If somebody um, wants to know the gospel, they should read the gospel. And that's why we are preaching the gospel, as I said. But there are a lot of people who call in, as you said, they say that we want to kill you if, you find, if we find you, we will attack you and all those kind of stuff. But in the midst of that, also we receive a lot of different other calls. People are illusioned and they want to know really um, about Christianity, about the Bible, about Jesus and why we accepted the Lord, why you preached the gospel, why did you accept it? Jesus. So they call. Uh, they ask these questions, and we have men, we have w women who call us. We have university students who call us. We have teachers, and it's f different people who call us, and and we are there to answer their questions. Even there are Taliban who call us, <laughs> <laughs> or mosque leaders. Wow. Uh, they call us, and I'm sitting beside. Do they, do they say, you know, hey, I'm calling from the Taliban? I mean, do they? Uh, uh, I asked them where you are calling, and they would say, I, I am from the madrasa, the Islamic okay. school. Or um, we had this Muslim preacher who called and said, somebody from the village came and told me that there are, there are some Afghans who are producing radio programs in our own language, and they became infidels, and they preach now the gospel to our people. So he called just to see why we do this and are we really followers of Jesus? So uh, I was able to talk to this man and he had a lot of questions. But at the end, after uh, four or five times of talk, he said, I never knew the real gospel. Wow. I didn't know yeah. really what you preach. But now I know. But because of fear, because I'm leading this mosque, I'm not able to convert to Christianity or become a Christian, but now I know the truth. Wow. So there are different people right. who call us. It just so fake news is a, actually a big issue in the Middle East. We have probably a lot of fake news from them, about them, and they have a lot of fake news about us. Right. They think Christians just go to this place to dance and have sexual orgies, and that's what they hear. And then they say, their leaders say, you should hate those people and reject those people. And then when they hear this story, that it doesn't connect. And then when they would meet a follower of Jesus, it even is a bigger disconnect. And so we, we, we are called as Christians to overcome that fake story right. that, the, that the Middle Easterners, that the Muslims have about us Christians. And we can do it through compassion and through the communication of the gospel. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Lone and Javed. They are involved with Operation Mobilization, reaching into Afghanistan through broadcast media. You know, it's interesting— 
we had a guest uh, just a few weeks ago here on VOM Radio named Brother Rashid, another Muslim background believer, and he used the word inoculate, that, that many Islamic teachings are designed to inoculate people against the gospel, uh, to prevent them from believing and prevent them from grabbing a hold. Javed, when someone like that mosque leader calls in who is who's genuinely curious and has questions. He's not being hateful. He's he's legitimately asking questions. What are some of the first things that you tell him about being a follower of Christ? I was a follower of Islam. I was a Muslim. So I never heard about the good news that God loves me. This was something strange, but I share about the cross where we, on the cross, we see open arms of God. When I see at the cross, I see that invitation coming to me, and I will give you peace. So I, I talk to them about the love of God, that God loves you. It's not because what you do earn that merit to be loved by God, but God, as your creator, as your creator loves you. So the message of love, it strikes, it strikes a lot of people. It touches a lot of and, people. And that's completely foreign within Islam. There, there is no yes. teaching that Allah loves you. Uh, that is not such a thing. That is, uh, <laughs> well, uh, we should, you know, they have this, you know, every uh, Quran chapter begins with Allah is compassionate and merciful. Every chapter. So, Bismillah Rahman Rahim, that phrase, everyone knows that. But to connect that with an actual love for me personally. Like a personal love yeah, relationship. Yeah, is somehow there's a disconnect to that, uh, isn't Because it? you have to earn your ah, salvation. Okay. You have to do a lot of things, the law, but everybody falls short of. Right. You have to earn, and you can never earn it. And you can never <laughs> earn it. But uh, yes, God is merciful, but where can you see God's mercy and also justice? Yes, God is merciful, but also He is just as God. Where can we see that? It's on the cross, where we can see. Yes, people say that God is merciful, but where can you see that? How can you prove that? On the cross, God proved His love and also justice. So how much of a risk is somebody taking uh, in an Afghan village to call you and say, hey, I've heard your radio broadcast. I'm now a follower of Jesus Christ. It seems like just making that phone call is, is putting their life at risk. It's really hard. I, I totally um, agree with you that it's really dangerous, but we have received many calls. I can say thousands of calls. Wow. And we have been in touch with people. We answer their questions, but what we do, we don't just preach at them, but also uh, we receive their calls and we have follow-up mm -hmm. system, that first level of follow-up and then second level of follow-up. It's hard for people, but is it worth it for them to call? They do. Yeah. I don't decide for them, but people, they call us. It is dangerous. We know people who called us, and now they went through persecution. Yeah, right now I'm in touch with one man who called us in 2014, and then uh, we built relationship through the phone, friendship, and then he went through second level of follow-up, knowing what is sin, who is Jesus, what is cross, and all that. And that's all just through telephone. And it's just, all through telephone. He has an, just an old-fashioned uh, cell phone. Yeah, yeah. So we went through uh, everything, and he went through a lot of things because it, in, in the area where he is calling from, it's remote area. Anyway, and... And in, in the summer, he called. He was so happy. God is answering his prayers and all that. And then Taliban took over the area. And, and now they force people to go to the mosque. And, and his son, who's a young boy, said to one of the neighbor's sons that his dad says that the Injil is a great book. The, the, Injil, the, oh, the Injil New is Testament. The, the, gospel. New Testament. Yeah. the gospel is a great book. And then that news went and the Taliban came after him. Wow. But the neighbors who saw his life, that changed life, and, and they came and everybody protected him and said to the Taliban, no, he's a great man and he is a good man. But 
he was asked, asked to go to the mosque and do five times of prayer uh -huh. and show himself just so he could live. And he, when he, I talked to him, he said, Jawed, I have to go to the mosque and do prayers, but every time when I bow down, I say, Jesus, I worship you. I love you, Lord, and I'm sorry for this, but I have to do this. <laughs> this wow. is a sad story, that's but a, this is reality. reality. That's reality. So tell me the story of, of one of the people recently who's come to faith. Uh, this young man called and he said, I listen to a radio programs and I love the message and I want to know more about Jesus. So after sharing the gospel with him and doing some follow up and, and sharing uh, more, uh, one day he said uh, that I want to give my heart to, to the Lord. I want to accept Jesus. And now he's doing the Bible study because he downloaded. He, he lives in a city. He has a cell phone. And we have uh, websites where we have all those tools. So he downloaded the Bible. And now he's reading that with his wife. And, wow. and they're growing uh, in their faith. So there are a lot of great stories. Beside all the bad things, there are great stories. Now... What does persecution look like for somebody who listens to the broadcast, comes to faith, makes that decision? What's going to happen to them in their village or in the city or with their family? Uh, I would share my own story when I accepted Jesus. Um, we were in the neighboring country where we accepted the Lord, and then we went back to Afghanistan uh, with my children at that time, they were small. So we went back to my house, my parents' house. And my father asked my son to say the kalima, the recitement, what they yeah, say. The uh, creed. The, the, the creed. creed. So they asked my son and he said, there is no God but God. And Jesus is the spirit of God instead of saying the way that Muslims <laughs> say. And that was a fire. And, yes, I can imagine. And, and my brother and my dad, they were so upset and they start fighting with me and they broke my ribs and they kicked us out of their house. Anyway, this is what I experienced. People, they, they were killed because of their faith. There are a lot of bad things could happen, but rejection from, from your own family it's very hard. Uh, it's really hard when your own family rejects you and they, they are ready to betray you. Joey, I think you should briefly also tell the outcome of your relationship with your dad. The yeah. rest of the story. The rest as, of the as story. Paul Harvey would and say. It's, it's a long story, but briefly. I mean, that happened many years ago. And just, you might share it just quickly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, we were kicked out of the house and um, they broke my ribs and all that. But. Um, but as a follower of Jesus, we never give up. We never stopped mm -hmm. loving them. And, and many years now I'm fast forwarding and many years passed by, but I always call them if I could help them in any ways. We never stopped that, my wife and I. And finally, uh, I wanted to visit them uh, last year, I would say. Last year I wanted to visit them. And, but before visiting uh, then I was sharing my story with some of my friends and my wife was and was there with me. And then what happened when I shared my wife after that sharing, and she said, Javed, as you shared your story, I still see pain. And just when you talk about your dad, still you have that pain. I see that when you share the story. And she said, um, one thing that I want to ask you is, did your dad do any good thing during your life for you? And I said, yeah, he did a lot of good things when I was young. And she said, remember one thing, one good thing that your dad did for you. That stayed with me and I started thinking about that. And slowly I started praying for my dad again. Although I, I thought I've, I've forgiven him, but still there was pain. So I start praying again for my dad. And, and then because I was planning to go to Afghanistan, I called my brother and said, uh, I'm coming to the country and I want to stay with you guys. And they were happy. But, but I had fear if I go back to my family, what will happen again? What would my dad do? Because in the past when I traveled every time, he ignored me. Totally he ignored me. He didn't want to talk to me. But this time when I went... 
my mom and sisters, brothers, everybody was so happy to see me. But my dad wasn't home and it was lunchtime when he came. As he entered the gate, he said, uh, is Javed home? Did he arrive? Is my son home? And, and, and I went to just in front of him with all that fear to greet him. But he came and, and he hugged me wow. and kissed my eyes and kissed me in my face and said, my son, I missed you so much. And, and that was such a beautiful thing to see uh, because there is persecution. But as a follower of Jesus, if you don't stop praying for your dear ones, if you don't stop loving them, God will bless uh, your relationship. And I believe in that. But as a follower of Jesus, you have to continue praying and loving them, even when they reject you. Mm. So how many years between your salvation and that softening with your dad 2018 was the year that i so saw 20 the, basically 20 years almost 20 years faith. yeah yeah so that's a good word for many of our listeners who may have a difficult situation and they just think i don't know if i can hold on keep praying keep showing love keep blessing uh and working that situation and with, it's a growth on our part too. oh yeah to be it, able to, 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 you know, we go up and down too. We have our own emotions that we have to f deal with. And it's not easy, I can't imagine, to be rejected. Yeah. We're talking today on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Loan and Javed. They are involved with Operation Mobilization in reaching and discipling Afghans. So, Javed, having been through that yourself, how do you prepare new believers to face persecution, to face rejection from their families, even other forms of persecution, Taliban persecution. Each one of us, we will have our, our own experience when it comes to persecution. If you see Paul, if you see uh, the life of Jesus, I love the Gospels. I totally understand if somebody goes through deep persecution, there are different feelings and hurts and all that. I totally understand that. And I can't prepare somebody for that, but I can tell them that this is what Jesus wants us to love and forgive. It might be for some people, Javed, you're saying that just because you're in a safe country right now or something, but I believe in that. If Jesus says, love your enemy and pray for them, if Paul rejoices when he is in, in chains and Philippians 4.4, 4, rejoice again, I'm telling you, rejoice. I can't enforce that to somebody and tell him to do what the Bible says, but I would encourage them to stand firm and show the world that you are a follower of Jesus. Jesus has victory. He has risen. He has victory. And, and yeah, let's remember all that. Let's try to live in that victory. I, one thing I know I've heard from Jawed numerous times is, uh, you know, the call for a follower of Jesus to be light and salt in their community, even before they talk, and that that mm -hmm. is perhaps their mandate at the t present time. Don't necessarily shout it out. Don't shove it in their faces, but live out this life and then s trust God to go from there. Isn't and, that sort and of— And it works. I mean, yeah. even the story that you told, the neighbors came to the Christian's defense That's and said, right. no, no, he's a good man. Don't, don't mess with him. They had obviously seen a difference. Yeah, it's. Uh, uh, I, I told you one story, but there is another story as well. Uh, we were in touch with this brother for many years. He was leading a home church, and then he was thrown in jail in Afghanistan. Um, and what happened, some radicals, they came to attack his family. He had um, children, young girls, and, and some radicals, they wanted to attack his house, but neighbors stood up in front of those people and they said, over our dead bodies. Wow. You can, he was a great man, even if he converted to Christianity, whatever, he was a great man and we will stand for him. And they did not let those radicals to attack his home. So as a follower of Jesus, we can shine. Salt and light, salt and light. You mentioned that, that he was a leader of a house church. How... How hard is it for Afghan believers to connect with other Afghan believers to form churches and, and to encourage each other and to grow together? It's not an easy thing. 
the issue of trust is big. How could you trust? Because it could get you killed. You know, if, yes. If this gets out that I'm a follower of Christ, I could be killed. So who do I trust to tell that to and, and to get And that? it's not easy, but there are underground home churches who are getting together. We don't have these big churches, right. <laughs> these big, <laughs> big buildings, I would say. Praise the Lord for the churches. I'm so thankful that in these countries we have uh, churches and we have buildings where we can go and worship the Lord freely. And sometimes I see people take it for granted. Anyway, I wouldn't go there. <laughs> but uh, it is it is hard, but there are home churches and people do take risk. So are you able, as people are on the phone with you, are you able to kind of point them towards a, a gathering of believers or somebody in the country who can fellowship with them and disciple them? Or is it too dangerous to do that? We have done that. We have put some people in touch with each other. Uh, we are being really careful. Uh -huh. It might take a year uh -huh. till we do follow up with the people and slowly take steps. Um, it's not easy, but we have done those crazy things. But we're talking today on Voice of Martyrs Radio with Lone and Javed. We like to equip our listeners to pray. So how do we pray for Afghanistan this week? Well, I always start with the social, political reality of the country. Let's just pray that all this conflict, there will be a genuine solution. They've just had government elections now at the end of September. And uh, that, that just politically, soci uh, socially, this country could have peace. That's number one. And then... Uh, Again, you know, we, are, we pray that, that the message of Jesus can get to the people, that they can understand and overcome the fake news that they have heard for so long and that the clear, simple message, you know, they mix it up with the politics of the West, with Christendom, with the military, all of that is seen as Christianity uh, and that they can see and understand wh who Jesus is, uh, the Gospels. And then I would say the third is for the believers. They are very vulnerable and uh, that they can grow strong and become salt and light uh, in their small context and that that can expand. Um, yeah, if we talk about in the prayers, I really want our brothers and sisters to remember to pray for the Church of Afghanistan because in the past 10, 15 years ago, nobody thought that there were Afghan believers. But now we witness the birth of the church in Afghanistan. And, and in, in Afghanistan, this is what, one thing that I, I have seen again and again and again. We have big families. And when uh, a child is being born into the family, it's the brothers, sisters, siblings who are helping the child to grow. And the church has been born in Afghanistan. We need our brothers and sisters to encourage us, to stand by us and pray for us because um, a child needs cleaning, a child n needs being fed, and, and some nights the father and the mother, ha uh, they have to be awake to help uh, the baby. So this is what's happening. We know that our father in heaven, he is for it. We know that it's it's glorious to see the Church of Afghanistan being born, but also I really hope and pray that the brothers, sisters, and the West they will pray for the people of Afghanistan, for 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 the believers in Afghanistan, and and stand by by them. Because you work in Afghanistan, and because we know this is a very dangerous place, how how many martyrs have you known? people who were doing gospel work who have laid down their lives for the kingdom? In uh, Afghans, I know one. That was back in 1987. There might be others. Yeah, so that one, I don't know. I've heard of others, but I don't right. know them. You don't know them personally. Yeah, but in terms of uh, uh, Western or uh, outsiders that have come in and worked in the country in terms of development workers, I think about 25 have been killed in the last 10 years. And some of them have been my friends, have been in our team, and and those some they were random uh, armed opposition groups. They were shot by bandits or on the street or whatever. There's been a lot of foreigners in, in the last ten years that have been killed. One of the things that our listeners want to do, I hope they want to do, 
is they want to reach out to Muslims here in the United States, uh, their coworkers, classmates, friends. You work among Muslims. Javed, you yes. used to be a Muslim. Yeah. Advise us on how the best ways are to have those conversations so that so that we can do what you do. We can talk to Muslims about Jesus. That is the great commandment to go. And I think a lot of us, we didn't go <laughs> out of our comfort zones. And that's why God allowed Muslims to come to us now. So as we have these people, praise the Lord, in the U.S., we have that freedom that we could share with someone or love someone. But uh, unfortunately, because of that fake news, we talked about fake news in the East, and also there is fake news in the West as well, that all those Muslims are uh, terrorists. All those Muslims are bad. Mm, now God brought them to you. They are not all bad. They are uh, not all terrorists. How can you take a step and, and, and go to their house, who, the new person who came to y your neighborhood, and welcome them? Uh, greet them. Uh, because they're lonely. Uh, they came to this land and they don't have neighbors. They don't have their relatives anymore. They don't have those loved ones that they had. Could you become their friend? Could you become their good neighbor, good Samaritan? How you could uh, uh, take that step? Or if at, at the work, when they come, a lot of them, they, they have this fear because of what the news says right. and they think, okay, if I say anything, what these people would think about me? And But if you take, a, take them for a coffee and just ask, how are you doing? I think it would, it, it would mean so much to them. You don't have to push them, uh, okay, yeah, exactly. you're a sinner and <laughs> I am a better than you. And all. No, no, they are human beings. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And now we could be the feet of Jesus. We could be the hand of Jesus. And please show them love and see what God can do. L pray for them. Uh, they need your prayers. And build relationship, build friendship, and, and show Jesus. Don't preach Jesus. Show Jesus be to salt them. and light. This is the same as we're asking our Afghan brothers and sisters to do. Exactly. Be salt and light. Yeah. I often do seminars on this, and I talk about two rooms. So we are in our room, it's comfortable, and they are in their room, and it's comfortable there. And, and we know that room, but we've never been in that room, and they've never been in our room, and then we get suspicious of, of that room, and they are suspicious of us. And the more suspicious we get, the bigger the wall becomes. And so it's important that we go into their room or we let them into our room. And so I talk about uh, good F words, how to get into that room. And you've already said friendship. And then I say food, get some kebabs and some palau and eat together and learn how we can connect through food. And then I say family. You already mentioned, you know, just ask them, ask them about their mothers, ask them about their relatives. And because the, the Muslim people are family oriented people, that you'll just immediately uh, get friends and bring them into your family. I think, you know, we believe in focus on the family, right? And here we have something in common with the Muslim people because they also are focused on the family. No, it's not all beautiful over there, but they have a strong family unit. And then I talk football. Not American football, but the uh, the soccer. We call it soccer, but they call it football. Get interested in football and bang, you'll have Iraqis and Syrians and name it <laughs> out on the... Uh, and then I say faith. They are not afraid and ashamed of their faith. And talk about your faith as something that is normal, not something that you preach at someone as a project or you have to prove that Jesus is the Son of God or that Jesus is divine. Sometimes we think that's we have to prove that to them. No, as, as Javed mentioned, be live Jesus. And so I, uh, it's, it, you can just freely talk about your faith, which includes praying, which includes reading from the books, the holy books, because they believe in the holy books. So this is from the holy book. And then about the prophets, and then the wonderful stories of the miracles of Jesus and the, and the parables and so on. So uh, friendship, food, uh, uh, family, uh, football, faith. And then I have a few others, but Joey, you yeah, want to enter um, on that? But also we have to be careful when you're doing that to Muslims. It's based if 
uh, women yes, to women yes. and men to men. Absolutely. We do that. Don't go and hug your wives and say, <laughs> hi, welcome to America. It's that will really, not work well. That <laughs> wouldn't work well. But you can, uh, Very man to man, woman to woman. And, and, and uh, even if you go visit your families, respect them, show them respect. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and that would build friendship. And then be open to share about your faith when it comes. Uh, people are not blind they see things when you act like uh, the same as jesus commands you to be they will see uh, the light difference. of jesus in you yeah javad loan thank you for sharing this week on voice of the mars radio thank you for equipping us to pray for afghanistan and thank you for your ministry reaching afghans for jesus and Thanks. thank you for thank having you, us if you've enjoyed today's conversation, you can hear more just like it by visiting vomradio.net. You will find all previous episodes of VOM Radio to help you get to know more about God's people around the world and God's work, even in the hard places, even in the closed countries, places like Afghanistan. I know we hear a lot in the news about Iran, and even in the last couple of weeks, we've heard a lot about Iran Next week, we're going to get a rare glimpse from inside the country as a sister in Christ from Iran talks to us about what God is doing in the Islamic Republic of Iran. She has an amazing story of God working to reach the lost and to get the gospel to Muslims in Iran. You will not want to miss that story. So be back with us next week right here on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.